if you tell me that this is Pro Duo's first EV, it feels like they've been making EVs for years to, to create something that handles this well, something so balanced, so organic. It feels like none of the Pro Duo's that came before. Very, very shocking. This is it, Malaysia's first homegrown EV, the Pro Duo QV. And in today's video, I'm gonna bring you guys on a full rundown on all the details of this car, see how it stacks out against its competitors and take it out for a drive on Sepang International Circuit. But how does Pro Duo's first EV feels? Let's find out. My name is Adrian, I'm all about the details and you're watching C-Drive. The QV e-sports a very angular design, much like an evolution or a step up from the Emo 2 concept that was previewed earlier. And from this angle, I'm getting loads of Lexus-ish vibes with the sharp angular bumpers, the LED daytime running lights, as well as the very strong power domes on the hood. Now here you can notice that the headlamps actually spots a different housing, so it's a separate piece between the LED daytime running lights that runs across the entire width of the front end. Now this one is a bi-LED setup, so you get full LED headlamps on the QVE. Wheel sizes measures 18 inches, wrapped around 215 R18 profile tires from Atlas. Now something about these tires, these are re pretty much an eco friendly tire which are not very good at handling the 285 Nm of torque, of instant torque from the QVE. Wheelbase measures 2680mm, the longest one in the segment, longer than even the equivalent rival of the BYD Auto 2 and Proton e 5. Over to the rear, the Pro Duo spots a fastback SUV design which I think looks superb and this being on the road is definitely going to turn heads. The C-shaped LED tail lamps, the light bar design and the centrally mounted third brake light on top here underneath the spoiler just looks so so smart. And the proportions, there's loads of volumes to the top making this look like a very big car than this actual size suggests. To open up the boot, you press the logo here just like on Volkswagen models and boot space opens up to quite a sizable size although the official numbers have not been revealed yet and you don't get a spare wheel underneath there's a tire repair kit you also do not get a power tailgate option in the name of aerodynamics as well as design to open up the doors it's actually a hidden door latch and to the rear it's on top here just like you see in Toyota CHRs the QVE rides on an all-new platform that is jointly developed between Perdua and Magna Steyr. And this platform supports not only EVs but also hybrid and REEV potential. And this is a modular platform which supports body styles of hatchbacks, sedans, sportback SUVs between the A and B segment. And stepping inside, this is the most high-tech, high-quality cabin of any Pura Dua to date. And I appreciate that it does not look like a quote-unquote traditional EV. For starters, you get a floating touchscreen infotainment system that supports wireless Apple CarPlay and all the car's main functions are within this center screen right here. So you're able to adjust the different driving modes, steering wheel function, your regenerative braking, as well as your lights, conveniences, and all of those stuff. And over here, you will notice that there's also a discharging function. Yes, this Pro Duo EQV supports V to L function. However, my only gripe is that this center screen right here, it's angled a little bit downwards. So it does not look very ergonomic in terms of the driver's field of vision. There's a row of camera control buttons as well as your central locking. And the gear lever is actually a turn style, knob style design or to hold drive mode selector as well as your regenerative braking uh, settings. Here, the car keys. Oh, kind of cute. Over to the driver's side, you'll notice that you get a four-spoke style steering wheel, a very chunky, meaty one, 
on the left side this is where you have your multimedia controls on the bottom your phone controls as well as the menu settings and over to the right side this is where you have all your ADAS functions your cruise control your speed settings and your distance for your ACC and the 360 degree camera uh, shortcut key and to cycle through the different driving information you push this button right here and you even have a tire pressure monitoring system that reads out the exact tire pressures over to the instrument cluster you're able to cycle through two different uh, display teams analog or digital and my preference would definitely be analog and over to the center here is where you display all your ADAS functions and for the first in a pure duo it comes with cabin ambient lighting with seven different colors to choose from because of its fastback design, the rear windows are actually quite narrow. Hence, Perdua has installed this digital rear view mirror for better visibility of what's going on at your rear. And on the top here, you'll notice there's an SOS button. This is not for show. Sure. It's actually functional when in case of an emergency or an accident, it will automatically send a signal to Perdua's uh, help center to send you help immediately. Although this is an EV, Perdua still has a traditional start-stop button where you have to push the brakes and press start to start up the car. Main storage spaces are below the floating center console right here and you get two options, a Type A or Type C charging port to charge out your devices as well as a 12 volt socket. The driver's seat comes with power adjustment while the passenger is still a manual affair. Seated into the back seat, I have the front seat adjusted to my usual driving position and 175cm tall, I have about two tennis balls worth of knee room. And space in the footwell is also plenty and there's no center hum. However, the seat base is actually quite short and small, um, which means I don't have ample tie support on long distance drives. And headroom is actually pretty okay, given that this is a fastback with a sloping roofline. Although there are no recline adjustments for the rear seat, however, I get ambient lighting over to the rear doors, get a Type A and Type C charging ports, but no rear air vents, as well as two Tetaric hooks that supports up to three kilograms of weight. Okay, so out onto Sepang Circuit, with the Perdua QV and it's powered by a single front motor with 204 horsepower, 285 newton meters of torque. Zero to 100 century sprint is 7.5 seconds. And yeah, first taste of Perdua's first EV. There are three driving modes available, Eco, Normal and Sport, as well as steering mode. Um, there's also three settings, Comfort, Sport and Auto. So first turn of the wheel, I'm in the sportier settings for everything. Okay, today you are not cool. Ah. Car in the center. Okay. And this full pedal. Okay. Uh, stop the look at. Tire stop. Okay. It's okay. Tire stop. Tire stop. Tire stop. Okay. Full throttle. Whoa! <laughs> oh. Whoa! Full brakes. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Not yet, huh? Okay. So I, I will show you the jet. Okay, the region. Braking. Now it's so high. It's high. This one is low. Low. Ah. And this one, standard. Okay. Ah, uh, the field. Ah. So after this, uh, I will uh, show you the eco mode. Eco mode, okay. Uh, this side is eco mode. Okay. And this is the remote spot. Okay. And the region level, I set to low. Region low. Yes. Okay, so immediately in eco mode, um, the throttle isn't as responsive. It's just a very gradual um, power delivery. Just now when on sport mode, oh, you definitely feel the 285 Nm of torque pushing the front wheels. And something I noticed is that the steering feels very organic and it's quite responsive. And the car just behaves very well uh, possibly due to the lower center of gravity slow no, accelerate more yes that's why equal ah okay okay slow down slow down i'm just using the regenerative brakings a little bit on the brakes it's all right okay and all right oh even in eco mode when you dump the throttle there's a bit of wheel spin coming from the front wheels. Very, very impressive. 
Okay, body roll, let's see. Oh! So I said this standing view. Okay, comfort. Ah, in comfort mode, the steering is a lot lighter. Ah, a bit more, ah, a little bit more comfortable. So after this, uh, kita akan ada menu with that. Menu with that. So see that. Exactly. For the mark instruction. Okay. First cone. First cone. Wow. Make it the vehicle center. Mm -hmm. And slightly less. That's the door. Okay. Good to. Okay. Left. Okay. And right. Look right. Right. And left. Left. Good. Hard left. Hard right. Whoa! Very good. Wow! That was the comfort steering and... Eco. An eco mode. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> we will spin every single time. Okay, what, what really impressed me the most is the steering feel and the car's handling. You get a bit of play from the rear, rear of the car. So this is a very lively chassis. Oh. And with the instantaneous torque, the power. Oh. Is that for you? Normal. Normal? No, normal, normal. Okay. Auto steering. auto steering wheel. So in auto mode, it's going to depend on your steering inputs and it just tightens up according to your driving needs. And we come to the pit. Oh, very, very shocking. If you tell me that this is Perduo's first EV, it feels like they've been making EVs for years to, to create something that handles this well, something so balanced, so organic. It feels like... Oh, it feels like none of the Perduo's that came before. Very, very shocking. Number six. Okay, number six. Very nice. All right. Uh, done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you.